Welcome to the HP Palm Top Tube channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect SCSI devices to an HP 100 or 200LX Palm Top. So, first, before we go into the details of my specific Palm Top setup here, I'm going to provide a short introduction to SCSI and its history and use for those viewers who've never had any experience using SCSI back in its heydays. So what is SCSI? So SCSI, short for Small Computer System Interface, is a set of standards for physically connecting and transferring data between computers and peripheral devices. The SCSI standards define commands, protocols, electrical, optical and logical interfaces. The SCSI standard defines command sets for both specific peripheral device types. The first SCSI standard, generally referred to as SCSI 1, was published by the Technical Committee of the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, in 1986. The SCSI 2 standard, its successor, which I'm using in my Palm Top SCSI setup, was published in August 1990 with further revisions in 1994 and subsequent adoption of a multitude of interfaces, which we will show later in the video. So here is an example diagram of an external SCSI bus with five peripheral devices connected to it. A SCSI bus can be considered a more advanced, high-end equivalent to the popular IDE bus used to connect internal hard drives and CD-ROM drives on commodity PCs throughout the 90s and early 2000s. However, a major difference between IDE and SCSI is that besides connecting to internal drives with flat cables as IDE does, a SCSI bus was also capable of connecting to one or more external devices with various kinds of cables and connectors. So, what is the difference between IDE and SCSI? So, first of all, IDE is internal only, using 44-pin flat cables, whereas SCSI 2 used internal 50-pin flat cables. Only two devices were supported per IDE bus, a master and a slave device, whereas SCSI supported up to seven peripheral devices per bus, connected both internally and externally. Wide SCSI, a faster type of SCSI bus, could support up to 15 devices per bus. But we will go into detail about these various types of SCSI buses. The main reason why PCs used IDE instead was cost. It was much cheaper and you didn't need an add-on SCSI host adapter. And SCSI versions of devices such as hard drives and CD-ROMs were generally much more expensive than their IDE counterparts. So what systems primarily used SCSI? So SCSI was mainly used in small computer systems which are large multi-user systems mainly running Unix or VMS, um, high-end Unix workstations from manufacturers such as Sun Microsystems and Silicon Graphics, and high-end microcomputers such as Apple Macintosh systems used for graphic design, pre-press and video editing, uh, and some high-end Amiga and Atari systems. It was never popular in commodity PCs, but was widely used in PC server systems, running Microsoft Windows NT and its successors, or PC servers running Unix, like SCO or Linux, as well as Novell Netware. It was also used on some high-end PC workstations for graphic design, 3D animation, scientific computation, video editing, computer-aided design and manufacturing, and anything else that you could also use Unix workstations for. It's easy to find the SCSI port on any computer system, well the external one, uh, supporting parallel SCSI by finding the little SCSI logo above the connector. Historically, SCSI is derived from SASE, 
SASI, its predecessor, short for the Shugart Associate System Interface, developed in the beginning of 1979 and publicly disclosed in 1981. Larry Boucher is considered to be the father of SASI and ultimately SCSI, its successor, due to his pioneering work at Shugart Associates and then at Adeptic. Adeptic was a major manufacturer of SCSI chipsets and adapter cards for many platforms, starting from the early 90s. They produced many of the onboard SCSI chips for Unix workstations and Apple Macintosh systems, together with NCR Corporation and Optimum. They also produced a range of SCSI host adapter cards for PC systems and Macintosh systems. So, what kind of peripherals can we connect to a SCSI bus? Any kind of peripheral device that has a SCSI interface, such as an internal hard drive, an external hard drive mounted in an enclosure, a large RAID system housing many hard drives, CD or DVD readers and writers, tape drives, removable media drives such as floppy drives, floptical drives, magneto-optical drives and removable hard drives, as well as flatbed and drum scanners, and many more types of devices. Some professional printers and large format printers also used a SCSI interface. It's also worth noting that SCSI was used in the music production industry and some professional synthesizers and samplers, mainly for sample storage. As you can see in this diagram, we have this black arrow pointing to this thick black line, which represents the SCSI bus, and it is composed of a number of devices which are daisy chained together, and at either ends of the bus we have a terminator installed. So on the left side, the SCSI host adapter, which sits in the computer, has its own termination inside because it will always be at the end, at one end of the bus. At the far end of the bus, there is a terminator installed on the tape drive on the last device. Um, why do we need terminators? So, without a terminator, signals being sent over the bus will be reflected back into the bus at the end of the bus. This causes all kinds of interference and errors and problems. So you need to terminate your SCSI bus at both ends with a terminator. Terminator is a simple passive device that connects to the SCSI bus, which contains a number of resistors and prevents this information reflecting back into the bus at the end of the bus. So now that you're familiar with what a SCSI bus is, Let's have a look at the many different types of SCSI that were in use during the early 90s and early 2000s. So, let's have a look at the history and types of SCSI. So, over its lifetime there have been two main types of SCSI. Parallel SCSI, which was the original SCSI standard that we are covering in this video, which was in use during the 90s and early 2000s and can be compared to and was contemporary with the IDE bus standard. And Serial Attached SCSI or SAS, which is a new serial SCSI bus standard introduced in the mid-2000s and is still in use today on large server and storage systems with RAID configurations of large amounts of hard drives and can be compared to the SCSI equivalent of the modern serial ATA bus, also called a SATA bus. We will not be covering SAS in detail in this video. So, this table shows the different types of parallel SCSI that were in use before the advent of modern serial attached SCSI. At the top of the chart we have the original SCSI one, which had an 8-bit data path running at 5 MHz, for a total bus speed of 5 MB per second. As you can see, all 8-bit SCSI types, also called narrow SCSI, support up to 8 devices, whereas all 16-bit, also called wide SCSI, support up to 16 devices. 
Note that one device is usually the SCSI host adapter, so practically you can connect 7 or 15 peripheral devices. As newer standards emerged like Ultra SCSI, Ultra 2, Ultra 3, Ultra 320 and Ultra 640, with each having its narrow and wide version, the bus speeds increased considerably. It's worth noting that parallel SCSI devices are almost always backwards compatible, so you can connect a slower narrow SCSI 2 device to a wide SCSI host, provided you have the right cable. While 8-bit or narrow SCSI used 50-pin connectors, 16-bit wide SCSI usually used 68-pin connectors. In our palm top SCSI setup, we're using fast SCSI 2, as highlighted here. So our palm top setup's bus data path is 8 bits wide and has a speed of 10 megabytes per second with the support for up to 7 devices. For internal SCSI 2 devices we will be using 50 pin SCSI flat cables and for our external devices we're using either an Amphenol connector, also called a Centronics connector, or a DB25 connector depending on the external device in question. Some wide SCSI internal hard drives also came with something called an SCA connector. These connectors not only carried the SCSI data path but also the power for the hard drive and were developed to be placed in a caddy that could easily be inserted or removed even when the system was running allowing for hot swapping of damaged hard drives in server systems with RAID setups. So this concludes our introduction of the SCSI standard. Let's have a look at our palm top setup next. This diagram shows the SCSI devices currently attached to my palm top. Although it would be easy to assume that you can just connect a number of devices to your SCSI bus, and the host controller will take care of everything, configuring your devices automatically. This is not the case. Every SCSI device, whether it's internal or external, needs to be manually configured with its unique SCSI ID. Since the bus supports seven peripheral devices, there are seven SCSI IDs that can be assigned, from ID 0 to ID 6. ID 7 is usually reserved for your SCSI host controller. Configuring a specific SCSI ID is usually done on the peripheral device itself, usually with jumpers on internal devices and with dip switches or other switches on external devices. Goes without saying that every device must have its own unique SCSI ID. So, Next, let's go over all the hardware featured in my Palm Top SCSI setup. So, the HP 200LX itself is a stock machine that has been altered with a double speed crystal. So, it is twice as fast as a stock machine and it has a total of 5 megabytes of RAM through the use of a 4 megabyte RAM expansion board. Then, in the PCMCIA slot, we have a QuadTech SSP100, which is a PCMCIA to parallel port card. The difference between this card and the few other cards that are supported on the HP DOS palm tops is that this is the only card that supports EPP. Now we will go into this a little bit further in detail, but EPP mode is uh, a newer standard for parallel ports which instead of the standard 150 kilobytes a second transfer speed raises that transfer speed to 2 megabytes per second which is very useful here as we are basically using hard drives and such so we need that faster parallel port so um, we have the Linksys Parascuzzi Plus which is a parallel to SCSI adapter which connects to a computer's parallel port and can support EPP mode for that 2 megabytes a second communication between the Linksys Parascuzzi Plus and the Palm Top. Next we have the SCSI 2SD which is a modern 
device that emulates an internal SCSI 2 hard drive has a slot for an SD card and can be configured via USB with a normal PC, a modern PC, uh, to emulate from one to four hard drives of any arbitrary size and it will present those as uh, one to four SCSI IDs um, and in my case I have configured this board to emulate two hard drives as you can see on the diagram of two gigabytes each the first one has ID 0 and the second one has ID 1 next we have an iOmega zip drive it's a zip 100 which has 100 megabyte removable disks it is classified as a removable hard drive it has a transfer speed of approximately 1.2 megabytes per second and this is the portable SCSI version there was also a parallel port version of this same device which connects to uh, any PC with a parallel port but this is the special SCSI version which supports SCSI and can be connected to a SCSI host controller and has a second SCSI port to allow daisy chaining more devices to it. Next we have a bunch of SCSI cables which I will go over in detail a little bit later on and uh, one of the nice things about the Linksys Paris Cousy Plus is that it provides a parallel port uh, a through port so we can actually still attach a printer or any other parallel port device to the uh, device and use that device provided that we do not use the SCSI access or the parallel port device connected to it at the same time. Um, finally on the palm top we have connected an optical serial mouse. Um, for details about this please reference my upcoming video on how to connect mice to HP DOS palm tops. So that concludes our overview of our hardware setup. So next we're going to have a look at configuring MS-DOS to use these devices and we're going to demonstrate the devices working with the palm top. Okay, let's have a quick overview of how everything is connected up. So we have the palm top here, which has the QuadTech PCMCIA card in it, which is connected with a parallel cable to the parallel input of our Linksys Paraskazi Plus adapter which has an Amphenol SCSI interface here which is connected with an Amphenol cable to a DB25 cable on the SCSI input port of the zip drive and the SCSI through port is connected with a cable to a DB25 SCSI to internal 50 pin SCSI adapter and that is connected to the SCSI 2SD which emulates the two 2 gigabyte hard drives and has a software terminator built in as has the Linksys Para SCSI which is on the other end of the bus. Now the Para SCSI Plus provides a parallel through port uh, to which we have connected here an OPL3 LPT AdLib compatible sound card for the parallel port which is connected to my speakers. Okay so let's have a look at the configuration uh, in MS-DOS to get these devices working. So I have everything in my auto exec.bat file which is on my C RAM drive on the palm top and um, there is a bit of a catch-22 with the drivers because we need to enable the PCMCIA parallel port card first before we can load the driver for the Paraskazi. Because the enabler for the parallel port card is a DOS executable uh, and it needs to be enabled before we load any of these device drivers that normally go into the config sys file, you know, we can't do that. So I'm using a tool called devload which allows us to load DOS config sys drivers after the config sys has finished from the autoexec.bat or from the command prompt. 
So first we initialize the SPP100 card with the E flag, which sets it in EPP mode. Then we load the SCSI SP manager. So as you can see in this diagram, an SP manager is an advanced SCSI programming interface manager, which is sort of a middleware driver that provides an abstraction between your SCSI host adapter and SP drivers, which are the drivers that will work on top of the SP manager and are supplied with the devices that you connect to your SCSI bus. So we initialize the SP manager, which is going to scan the SCSI bus and look for all the devices that we have connected to it. And then we are going to load the guest .exe, which comes with the iOmega zip drive. I tried the original uh, config sys driver for the zip drive, but it won't work with CPUs lower than a 286. So I had to use the guest uh, driver instead, which seems to work very well and it uses and is compatible with the SP manager that we load before it. And then the last thing we do is we load the SP driver for hard drives called WSDRV and this basically um, will enable all our SCSI hard drives on the bus and assign drive letters to them. So if we uh, exit this and we reboot the system I've added actually here I've added pause commands after each step so we can see what's going on when we reboot the machine, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to do a full hard reboot of my C drive. And as we can see, the enabler has enabled the parallel port card in EPP mode. If we continue, the SP manager has just scanned the SCSI bus and has found ID 0 and ID 1 are two two gigabyte SCSI drives from the SCSI 2SD and on ID5 the ZIP100 drive and is now ready for use with SP drivers. So if we continue we now have the iOmega guest driver which is using the SP manager and has identified our ZIP drive and assigned drive letter F to it. If we continue, we have the last driver, which is the hard drive driver, which has found our two uh, hard drives from the SCSI 2SD and the zip drive. And when, when it's done, see, it has added drive letters G and H for the two hard drives and another I, which it's reserved for the SCSI drive, but we're going to use the guest driver because it's much more compatible and seems to work better. And then if we continue, we just boot into DOS. And I'm now on my E drive, which is um, substed or linked to the uh, G drive, the first of the two hard drives here. So I'm actually working on the uh, SCSI 2SD's first hard disk now. If you look at the drive, it's two gigabytes. There's only about 192 megabytes remaining so I've got quite a lot of software on here and the speed is is pretty good I'm not entirely sure if the Paris SCSI Plus is using the EPP mode because when it starts up it doesn't say so and the speed isn't quite what I thought it would be but it the driver has a lot of options and flags and I just need to experiment some more with it and tune it and I'm sure I'll be able to get it to work faster and definitely support that EPP mode in the part two video, the upcoming video, where uh, I will be adding several additional devices to this bus and demonstrating them. So let's start Windows, for example. This will load off the SCSI 2SD. It's a little bit slower than using a compact flash card in the PCMCIA slot, I'd say about 75% the same speed. And let's have a look at our drives in the file manager. And oh, 
This disc isn't formatted yet, so I can't read it. So I'm just going to put a formatted disc in it. I still need to find a way to disable that additional iDrive that the hard drive SP manager creates. So if we have a look, we can see that under Windows, it actually detects the F uh, as a removable device because it has a little floppy icon instead of a hard drive icon. And if we click on F, we can see the contents of our zip disk. Now the first time you do that, it will always take a while because it needs to calculate the amount of bytes free. Um, G is our the root of the SCSI drive and E is substit to a directory in that drive which basically contains all my software, my games, Windows, Gem, you know, nearly two gigabytes of HP 200 LX software and on the F drive we have, this is my development disk, it has uh, Power Basic, Quick Basic, Turbo Pascal, Turbo C, uh, etc. So that's a little demonstration of Windows and the hard drives. So I'm going to quit Windows now. And we're going to have a play with the zip drive. So if I go to the F, see the contents is my development software. Let's maybe load a game and see if the speed is, is good for daily use. You can actually just run your game straight off the zip drive. Just do a directory listing. First time always takes a few seconds to calculate the remaining bytes free. Now this disk uh, has about 12 megabytes free, so it's nearly full. So let's maybe go into platform. And I have a few games in here. Let's maybe try Commander Keen. And we have key for C. Turn on my speakers. So the game loads. Here we go. And just let that load for a second and new game easy now this game seems to not use the sound card while it's loading so it actually works the OPL3 LPT on the pass-through port um, doesn't make any issues but it does happen in most games whenever there is SCSI access while music commands are being sent to the OPL chip the game will simply freeze because you know a parallel port does not support two devices simultaneously but this game seems to run somewhat well yep yeah, see here is the problem it was trying to read at the same time as playing music and now all you can basically do is just restart the system so in case you want to play games um, with the SCSI setup and the OPL3 LPT, the best thing to do is to copy the game to the RAM drive first, to the C drive, and then launch the game, which is what I'm going to do now after our system has booted. I'm going to copy um, a game to my C drive. Now First, I'll need to make some room. I like to use the built-in file manager because it's quite a good one. So let's uh, delete these Commander Keen games. And we'll select something from our SCSI hard drive. And let's choose a strategy. We'll go with Planet X3, one of my favorite games for the machine. 
Just copy that to the C drive. This will take a few seconds. You know, there's probably a lot of overhead on this bus because, you know, you're going through PCMCIA, then through Parallel, then through SCSI. You know, there's a lot of translation in between. So it's not, you know, the, the full speed of the bus, but I think it's acceptable. I mean, it took a few seconds to copy this game. Um, so let's quit this. And launch the game. Uh, we'll just do one. And four, one. And here we go. And that was my presentation of the Linksys Parascuzzy Plus connected to the HP 200LX. Um, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button and the bell icon. Uh, I am going to be making a second part to this video, which will be coming out in about two weeks, where I will be adding several additional SCSI devices to this bus including a flatbed scanner and a CD-ROM drive and maybe some other devices. It depends on what I can find in my garage. Thank you for watching.